Time to take a look at what is probably the best CO2 modern military replica fun rifle of recent times. and welcome to AAR On Air and this week it's the review of the Crossman SBR and I didn't want this little fun packed pocket rocket to go unnoticed. I have used this before way back when it was boxed up as a contestant for the longest named CO2 rifle. It was indeed the Crossman DP MS Panther Arms SBR semi-automatic blowback BB rifle. <sighs> Well, at least they've shortened its name a lot to simply the Crossman SBR. Now, to my mind, this little SBR has all the ingredients to make a proper fun pack back garden plinker that will keep you coming back for more. Anyway, let's get on with the specs and walk around and then I'll get to that shooting and fun a little later. It is all black, as you would expect. It is 670 millimeters, or just under 26 and a half inches long, with the six point adjustable stock fully closed. Or 770 millimeters, which is around 30 and a quarter inches long, fully open. It tips the scales with a weighty feel, but not too heavy. 2.58 kilograms or five pounds, 11 ounces, unscoped and without other toys attached. This is just enough to give it a feel of being the real deal, rather than an all things plastic item. It is made of high quality materials and not only feels solid, but it is solid. It feels like it would take a few knocks if you see yourself the type to be throwing yourself around when stopping the bad guys, dressed up as invading tin cans, that is. For the rest of us, it just gives it a very satisfying, well-constructed feel. The quality of the plastics where used is top draw. And where possible, the latches, locks, bolts, buttons, etc. are all functioning. Again, to keep the real deal feel going. The front sees the barrel protruding out of the front of a whole mass of weaver rails. On top, both sides, underneath. Well, if they found any more spaces to put them on, it would be amazing. The top one goes the full length of the rifle and the others are not far behind to be fair. The detachable front sight is a flip up post and is fully removable should you prefer. This matches up with a pop up rear which is again removable and adjustable for windage. But no elevation adjustment. Under the front of the bottom rail is a 45 degree grip which is movable along the rail to fit you perfectly. Moving back we come to the main body and like I said earlier this has most of the catchers functional. On the right hand side is the mag release button which when depressed allows you to pull the weighty twin CO2 magazine free. More on that later. Above this is the gate for the side eject. This is opened as soon as you pull back on the rear cocking lever. You'll need to do this with the two fingers to allow the lock to release the pull. If you want to close this door back up then you will need to press the button on the left hand side and then close the door. That'll help keep the dust and dirt out. The safety is on the left hand side too and has symbols for safe, single and multi-shot. Full auto though is not allowed here in Blighty so it's trigger finger training to see how fast you can pull the trigger. The grip is AR-15 style just as you would expect and is big enough and comfortable enough with stippling to aid grip in inclement conditions. That rear adjustable butt is moved by pressing the button on the underside and you can pull that to your preferred position. 
It will indeed come off completely if you feel the desire. The trigger is two-stage and a little weighty, but not ridiculously so. Sadly, not adjustable. Let's take a closer look at that magazine now, shall we? You will need to remove the CO2 cover. It's clearly marked on the bottom of the magazine. Once removed, you can actually see where the twin CO2s fit. There is a tool inside for you to adjust. Simply slot them in, tighten them up, each individual one. Now it will work quite happily on just one CO2. Adding two CO2s doesn't do anything to increase the power. All it does, it gives you more trigger time. The tool itself fits nicely in there. Click the magazine cover back into place. And with the CO2s in place, it's best to ideally use a little bit of silicon oil to keep the seals in good condition. Then it's time to load up with the 24 or 25 round of BB. Pull down on the spring, watching your fingernails, and it will then lock into place right at the very bottom. There it shows the hole for you to then drop in your preferred BBs. <laughs> there you go, until all 24 or 25 are loaded. I'll stick to sort of 24 of them. Then release that and it takes the pressure on the top. Once they're all loaded, you're then ready to return this back to the gun for the fun to start. Time to get this over the chronograph and see what this is kicking out, power-wise. At this point it's worth mentioning that this isn't intended as some pest controlling tool. It's a plinker, and a darn good one at that. So I'm not expecting high power outputs at all. And indeed, using standard weight 5.4 grain steel BBs, it saw 387 feet per second, which is 1.8 foot pounds or 2.44 joules, which is more than enough and fast enough to take out those tin cans I was talking about earlier. The thing to point out here though, is the completely uncontrolled desire to go full on crazy when shooting this through the chronograph and not concentrating on the results. Such is the attraction of this to keep shooting as fast as you can. With that in mind, I have dressed this up in some amazing gear for the target work. <laughs> Let's have a go, shall we? Out at small back garden length of around 15 meters. Here goes. Right. Anybody with their serious pants on, go and get changed right now, because this is not to be taken that seriously. This is one heck of a piece of fun kit. I love it. It really is that good. Yes, I've gone way over the top as far as scopes are concerned. I've put a C3, Serato as it used to be, on the top for target work. Then I've put a red dot on the side at 45 degree angle so I can then take out the tin cans that are invaded. I've gone the lot, done the whole thing. I've put the 24 rounds in the magazine because it's a huge magazine and it's heavy as well. Twin CO2s in that one. Slap it in. You've got the grip at the front. You've got the extendable butt pack. You've got the safety that is on the left hand side that can very easily be done with your thumb. Okay, if you're left handed, you're going to have to use something else, probably your trigger finger or something like that. You've got that pull, open comes the side door, it has blowback, so you get that feel, which makes it awkward when you're trying to shoot a target, but like I've just said, if you've got your serious pants on, go home and get changed, because it's not about that. Let's have a look, first of all, at some target work. It's windy, it's a BB, it's out at about 15 metres, you're not going to push it much more than that with less than two foot pounds. It's about fun. So, let's have a go, shall we? Take those off. It 
into fire. <laughs> oh man, this is great. That's all this is about. Just keep going for it. I love it. I really love it. I shot this thing a few years ago when it got a stupid name. Now it's just the SBR and it is terrific. <laughs> terrific fun. I sound like Muttley, don't I? No, that is really, really good. Uh, hang on, I've got to do some tin cans yet. First of all, I go and get the target. Let's just have a look, see what it's done. <sighs> oh man. That blowback is really, really good. It does give you just that bit of a feel. I like it. Right, let me go and get the target work. <laughs> you know what? It's a BB gun with, I say, around two foot pounds of energy. And it's done that. Not really focusing that hard. The scope sort of zeroed in and it's just blasted straight through there nothing wrong with that at all that's more than enough to take out some invading tin cans and if you're not sure about that i'll prove it tin cans <laughs> oh here we go I don't know what it is with these things. They just are so much fun. They're not to be taken seriously. But you know what? They're actually pretty accurate considering. And you can either use it for a spot to target work if that's your thing. You're not going to get brilliant, brilliant results. You're only going to take it out 10, 15, maybe 20 meters. It's not that powerful. But if you want to put it on its side and start shooting some tin cans, you want to do it from there. That's it, I'm out again. 24 rounds that goes in these things just isn't enough. You need more. The thing is though, I'm still using the same two CO2s and I've been blasting away for I don't know how long. They do last quite a while because you're not kicking out at 12 foot pounds, of course. So you will get some fun. They're weighted, they feel fantastic. If you're really into it, you'd probably try and get yourself a spare magazine or two, but I have no idea how much they cost. They're not probably gonna be cheap. Stick yourself a decent scope on it. Just put one or the other. I just fancied both, and it is terrific fun. This is a red and green um, red dot, and it's a decent piece of kit. I think the, the red dot's only about 30 quid, and your Serato C3, whatever you want to call it, is about 90 quid, give or take. It's, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant, brilliant fun. The whole thing is not expensive. You, you're talking sort of pistol territory. You've got some weight. You know you've got this thing in your hands. I'm going to shut up because obviously I'm waxing lyrical about this. I enjoyed it before. I've enjoyed it again. Should you be able to have fully auto? In this country, you haven't got that option. But you know what? How quickly would you get through that ammunition? Now I know why they sell these things in 1500s, because you're just going to fly through the ammo. Brilliant, great fun. I've done <laughs> back to the studio, fab. Just how much fun was that? It's more than accurate for its intended use and just so much fun. Now, if all that lot wasn't good enough, then you're gonna love this next bit, the price. This weighty piece of solid fun, which is top drawer, to my mind, is gonna cost you the same or less than a decent CO2 replica pistol. Less than 250 pounds UK. And that, to me, is really good value for the money. You need to feel one of these to appreciate exactly what I mean. Oh, and you can use this with open sights, red dot, scope, all of the above, or however you prefer. Again, I need to stress this is not your all things plastic item. It's high quality for budget money. 
I know I say how much fun some of these budget guns can be, but this is irresistible when you get hold of it. And you will get loads of shots from two CO2s. Please don't ask me how many exactly, because the chances of me counting each trigger pull is, well, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> but you will get loads and loads. And don't forget, you can get away with just using one CO2 if you're not going to use it that much. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that's going to happen. I knew I was going to enjoy this, and I have thoroughly. Please, give us the old thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, feel free to share, and don't forget to use the bell icon to make sure you're notified when the new videos come out. There is all of this lot, and of course, Airgun Factory for chats. There is the AAR on their website for merch and all sorts of stuff. A big thank you to Vector Air for getting hold of this for me to have fun, sorry, have a review, yes, review for you. <laughs> <clears throat> a serious review, of course. They do dig deep when asked, and I appreciate that. I hope, sincerely, they don't think they're getting this one back. Above all that, it's a big thank you to you guys out there who get what it is we're trying to achieve here on the channel. Thank you. Please stay safe and shoot safe, and hopefully I'll see you all next week. <laughs> Bye for now. I'm going again while it's dry. I just love this. Oh, yes. <laughs>